check it out we got a full wall of epiphone 2022 models for the shop and i got my work cut out for me because i want to review them all i am gonna start with the prophecy series finally i have the chance to review the les paul prophecy in two colors i am gonna review both of these then i'm gonna give the extra one more chance i reviewed this one in gloss black i didn't like it too much back then so i'm gonna give it another go then i'm gonna do the v I got these three beauties as well, the Muse series and a modern figured. A couple of classics and some affordable E series which are actually pretty good. And this little guy. The Les Paul Prophecy is such an important guitar, a lot of people want one that I'm not gonna take any chances and I'm gonna review both of these just to be absolutely sure that it's a good enough guitar for the money. Everybody else is reviewing the Les Paul Prophecy in the Olive Tiger color, I like being different, I'm gonna do the Red Tiger color. Nah, I'm kidding. The demand for these is so high that by the time I've ordered them and I've ordered all three colors, the Olive Tiger was already out of stock. As I said, the demand for these is crazy high. If you want to know more about the Prophecy series history, check out my Epiphone Futura video. I'm gonna link it above. If you go into Epiphone's official website, you will not find a specially designated page for the Prophecy series. They are part of the Inspired by Gibson collection and you can find them under the Modern Les Paul, Modern SG and Modern Designer. Now I'm gonna show you a little trick how to view all of the prophecies. If you go for example into the Les Paul Prophecy, check out the path up here. Epiphone Prophecy Les Paul Prophecy. Click on the Prophecy part of the path and you get all of them in one place. Here they are, the Jerry Cantrell, the Extura, the V, the HG and the Les Paul all in one place. Here's the current official listing of the Les Paul Prophecy as of the end of 2022. It costs $900 and we have a couple of colors. Black aged gloss, which I will review after this video. Olive Tiger aged gloss, which didn't come, I ordered. And the gorgeous Red Tiger aged gloss, which I will show you right now. Here it is, the third generation of the Prophecy in all its glory. There are many changes. The finish is now satin instead of the gloss that the previous generation had. The EMG pickups are now replaced by Fishman specially made for the Prophecy series. Each pickup has three voicings that are controlled by the push-pull volume and tone pots. We got Modern Humbucker, Vintage PAF and Split. Combine that with the three-way switch and you have so much tonal combinations that you can choose from. The Les Paul Prophecy still features a full thickness body but it has some modern touches to it. Finally Epiphone went with ebony fingerboard for these instead of rosewood. This time they made it with a 12 inch radius instead of 14 and check out those gorgeous abalone inlays which are complementing the body color. I was never a huge fan of these but in this particular color they are great. As a part of the Inspired by Gibson collection the headstock resembles the Gibson open book more closely. Check out the back. Epiphone didn't make the Prophecy thinner but they got rid of the binding and did some colorways. The Fishmans are active of course but there was no need for additional routing because the 9V battery is inside the cavity. Check out that high fret axis. This is a 24 fret guitar so it needs this huge cutaway. In my video review of the previous generation of the Les Paul Prophecy I've called out Epiphone for backing up and not making it too modern. With this last generation of the Les Paul Prophecy, Epiphone had finally made a proper rival for the LTD Eclipse. All of these modern touches are well explained into the official listing that I'm gonna show you on screen now and I'm gonna give you the official specs from the website. Body specs, neck, hardware, the electronics and other. Finally, the mighty third generation Prophecy is on my workbench. What do we got here? We have mahogany body, hard maple top with multiply binding, flame maple veneer, two pieces. 
Then we got a mahogany neck with a set neck construction and comfortable access cutaway. Ebony fingerboard, abalone inlays, 12 inch radius, 24 jumbo frets. Graftech new bone nut Grover automatic locking tuners inspired by Gibson headstock with the custom diamond. A set of Fishman pickups specially made for the Epiphone Prophecy series. I've already tried them in the extra but I'm curious to hear them here. Then we got Epiphone, Lock Tone, Bridge and Tailpiece both locking. Nerd metal knobs which control the voicings of those Fishmans. Uh oh, the Grover locking tuners are not locked. This is how the guitar came from the factory, it's out of the box. And the strings are not supposed to be wound around the tuning heads. This is not how you put strings on a locking tuner. Somebody at the factory didn't know how to do it. I'm gonna show you later. Oh no, it's the same with the black gloss guitar that I have. Somebody doesn't know how to put strings on locking tuners. And it's not only that, the setup on both is pretty horrible. The black one was set a little bit better, but both of these can be greatly improved and I'm gonna do just that. Measuring the Fishmans. The bridge is a 20 dead. Switching over to the neck and I'm gonna wait a little bit till they settle down. 99, come on, give me 20, give me 20. 20 at the neck as well. I'm gonna go absolutely nuts if the middle position is 10. Nah, it's gonna be around 9.85. The tone pods control the modern and the vintage voicing, individual for every pickup, and the volume controls the split voicing, but it's not an actual split, it doesn't affect the resistance of the pickup. The color of the hardware is brushed nickel, so we have these metal knurled brushed nickel knobs. They have this cool detail to them, you see the top is asymmetrical, I've seen this on the Epiphone Extra. They go well with the aesthetic of the guitar and no poker chip for the three-way switch, which is also cool. The usual Epiphone lock tone locking bridge that I'm used to seeing on a lot of modern Epiphones these days. Epiphone written on the bottom and it locks through some notches in these holes. Individual saddles held in place by a single spring. The bridge of course is metric and it locks on these struts which are thumb wheel and flathead screwdriver adjustable. I am a huge fan of locking hardware because it saves your setup. If I've already done a setup on this guitar I don't want to lose it by moving it around. The tailpiece is also locking and it's uh, brushed nickel as well as the other hardware. The back of it, here's a look at the back, Epiphone logo and you see the way it locks through the struts. The body features a two-piece hard maple top with a two-piece flame maple veneer. Aged gloss finish for the new generation and multiply binding along the edge. Unlike the old generation of the Prophecy, this one has the multiply binding only on the top, doesn't have it on the bottom and I'm gonna explain why. Mahogany neck with a set neck construction and binding that continues alongside the neck with black side dot inlays. This new generation features ebony fingerboard instead of the rosewood that it previously had. Not as dark as the older ebony but still good. Being a prophecy of course it has 24 frets meaning that the pickups are pushed towards the bridge, especially this one. Which takes a little bit of getting used to if you come from 22 fret less poles. But check this out, the abalone block and triangle inlays complement the body color. Look at them! I was never a fan of these inlays, especially in the older generation, but I think they go pretty well together with the red tiger color. Good job Epiphone, although you could have splurged for the Graftech tusk nut instead of the new bone cheaper one. It is what it is, I guess. Although I give it to you, the installation of the nut was done flawlessly on this particular prophecy. Flushes great with the binding and the headstock. Speaking of, we got multiply binding for the headstock and inspired by Gibson shape. The cool logo and the custom diamond as well. Brushed Nico Grover Rotomatic Locking Tuners as well. And the cool thing is that the veneer for the headstock is aged gloss like the body. Here's a look at the truss rod cavity while we are here. A two-way adjustable truss rod, a little bit narrow for the cavity, but it's okay. What is actually cool is that the cover for the truss rod is this traditional Epiphone bell, but there's no writing on it this time. Two ply plain gloss. I think that's a stylistic improvement over the older generation. It was too busy. I'm gonna show it on screen. Les Paul Custom Prophecy plus too much going on on the truss rod cover. The current generation has this blank gloss bell, which I think complements the satin headstock and actually accents it. Check it out. Looks cool, doesn't it? 
Now let's measure that neck. The nut is 42.8 mm or 1.68 inch wide. The 12th fret is at 53.3 mm or 2.09 inches. Thickness at the first fret 20.5 mm or 0.80 inch. Thickness at the 12th fret 23.2 mm or 0.91 inch. My measurements confirm that this is a full thickness body even though it doesn't have a binding on the back. 50 mm or 1.96 inch. Luckily for me, Epiphone backed out with the radius on this one. The previous generation, the second gen, had a 14 inch radius. Now they're back to 12 inches, which is typical for Les Paul guitars. I know 14 inch in combination with 24 frets helps shredders, but I did not enjoy that. I had some experience with these asymmetrical slim taper necks in the past. Check it out. The low E strings have more shoulder to the profile, where it's rounded off towards the high E strings. I saw this type of profile in the Xtura that I reviewed. You can definitely feel it when playing. Check out this gigantic high fret axis cutaway. It's actually comfortable now to play on the higher frets. Good job Epiphone. It's still a set neck construction though, it's not something crazy like a set through neck, it still has the heel like this. Anyway, a satin finished neck, asymmetrical slim taper profile, no volute near the headstock and on the headstock we have the QC sticker, handcrafted in China one. Inspired by Gibson headstock shape with Grover automatic locking tuners, serial number reads 2201 January of 2022. 15 indicates that this was made in the Qingdao China factory. Most modern Epiphones that I review are made there. Here's a better look at that Grover automatic locking tuner. It is brushed nickel as well to match the rest of the hardware. And this one feels pretty substantial and heavy. Let's weigh it. 49 grams. This is, I am assuming it's heavier than the bridge itself. And sure enough, check it out. The Epiphone locked on bridge is 46 grams. The Grover tuner is heavier than the bridge. 48. The aged gloss or satin finish scratches pretty easy, so be careful with any screwdrivers or sharp objects around it. The proper way to put strings on Grover locking tuners. You angle the hole of the tuner towards the nut, then you feed the string through it, no slack left. Tighten it pretty good from the back, but don't over tighten, don't use too much force, and then rotate at approximately 90 degrees. You don't wind the strings on the tuning head, that's why it's so narrow and low. That's the whole point of locking tuners, winds mess with the tuning. Epiphone needs to teach their workers to properly string these. I had to do the setup from scratch, adjusting the bridge and tailpiece, the height of the pickups, the height of the strings, the truss rod. And check it out, this is what properly strung locking tuners look like. Properly strung. Sounds like well hung. Unfortunately, Epiphone are no longer shipping the Prophecy with a hard shell case included. I bought my second gen Prophecy back in 2012 for $700 with hard shell case included. 10 years later, Epiphone had to somehow compensate for the inflation. I would have paid a little extra for the case though. It's packed pretty safely though, with this kind of bubble wrap that doesn't even pop. Boring. Back in my day, I was popping bubbles for at least an hour before I got to the guitar. Ooh, look at that, some stickers. Yeah, yeah, I know, I'm easily entertained. Most of these I've already seen in the Slash Signature guitars that I've reviewed. Here is the download application information, some big stickers, some small stickers. Ooh, first time I've seen one of these. Look at the lifetime warranty. Uh, it's not on a big booklet anymore. It's just this piece of paper that has some website information, a QR code. This is to save up on some paper. I approve of this. Ooh, check this out. Thank you for your purchase. You are now part of the Gibson Brands family, the world's most iconic guitar brands, brands that have shaped brands, brands, brands. The point is that Epiphone has heritage, and I like heritage. A heritage is something that you have to live up to though, so stay sharp Epiphone. As I mentioned, the new generation of the Prophecy is almost a pound lighter than the previous gen. It's around 8 pounds, now let's hear it. <laughs>
I'm gonna start with the objective side of things looking at the prophecy from other people's eyes. It is a cool looking metal machine, it's affordable and the Fishman pickups are pretty versatile. It costs around $800 in Europe which is almost $200 cheaper than the EC1000 series of LTD guitars. You gotta keep in mind though that these are not the Fishman modern pickups, these are specially made for Epiphone. Speaking of those Fishmans, now time for my subjective opinion. I don't like them. I simply don't like Fishman pickups. I didn't like the moderns, I didn't like those pickups in the Extura as well. The low mids are crazy scooped, that's why they cut so well in the mix. I know they're versatile and all, but they are just not my thing. I do however like all the modern touches of the Les Paul Prophecy. The inspired by Gibson headstock, the redesigned back with all the cutaways, the 12 inch radius. I especially love the body color tin lace and the ebony fingerboard. However, I don't like satin finishes, make one in gloss with EMG pickups and you got me. So far so good, but we still have the black one to review, let's do it now. <laughs> 